Hi everyone, in this video I am going to talk about implementing charts in an Angular web application. In particular I will use the NGX Charts framework. It is a framework for Angular and offers a variety of different chart types and a lot of customization. I will give a quick tour through all the chart types and the most interesting customization options. So this is the documentation page of the NGX Charts framework. It contains examples for all chart types. And also it contains the installation instruction. I have created a new Angular project and it contains a blank page, as you can see here. Also I am installing the required node packages, as you can see here. And also I need to import the required modules in order to use the charts framework. And we must provide some data for the charts. I have created a file which contains the data in the required format. There are two main formats, one single and one multi-format. The single format is an array of key value objects where the key is on the x-axis and the values in the y-axis. For example, we have the total sales numbers for each product. The multi-format also contains an array of objects. Each object has a key and a series of other key value objects. In that case, I have the sales numbers for each product and per month. And now I have created a new component to start with the bar charts. I have imported both data type arrays and I have assigned them to the class properties. These data properties will be used in the HTML templates for the bar charts. And now it's finally time to start with the adding the charts into the HTML template. At first I will start with a simple vertical bar chart. The input variable for the data is results. And here I will assign the single format data array. So this is the result. We have a vertical bar chart with the default settings. And here I have assigned some more inputs to the vertical bar chart. I will just save the changes and we should see the differences to the default settings. The view defines the size of the chart. Let's change the width and see the difference. We can also define the color palette for the charts. Let's change the first color and see the difference. We can also set the color scheme type of the bars. The possible values are ordinal and linear. Let's change it to linear and see the difference. Now we see that we get color transitions that represent the values. We can also set if the bars should be rendered as color gradients. Here we can set if the x and y axis should be visible. We can also customize the legend. 
We define if the legend should be rendered, set the title, and also change the position. For the position we have the options right and below. Let's change it to right. And now the legend is on the right. Also, we can customize the axis, namely defining whether axis labels should be rendered and also setting the axis labels. Furthermore, we can set if animations should be enabled, for example on loading the charts. We can also specify whether to render grid lines and showing data labels above the bars. Also, we can set the padding between the bars, that is, the distance between the bars. There is also the possibility to disable the tooltip and round the edges of the bars. You can also consume click events on the charts. For example, you can select, activate or deactivate an item. Define the event consuming functions and assign them to the proper outputs. Now I should be able to see the events in the console of the browser. Now we have covered most of the customization options. We can now try other bar chart types. For example, I can add a horizontal bar chart. It is the same as the vertical bar charts, only the bars are aligned horizontally. I can copy the input assignments of the other chart. Keep in mind that X and Y axes are swapped. Let's take a look at the stacked bar charts. You can also have a vertical and a horizontal chart. We assign the data to the results input. This time we assign the multi-data format because the stacked bars add another dimension. Let's save this and see how it looks like. We see now that there are stacks of bars. Each stack is a product. The bar pieces are the sales numbers for each month. Luckily, we can also copy and paste most of the inputs from the other bar charts. Let's do this and see how it looks like. And now let's introduce another type of bar charts, the normalized bar charts. 
you also have a vertical and horizontal type. They are similar to stacked bar charts, here the bars have a normalized length. We also insert the multi-data format. And of course, we can reuse the customization inputs. And at last, we can take a look at the 2D bar charts. Instead of stacking bar pieces, we get several bars for each product next to each other. We can also apply the same customization options. Alright, let's take a look at another chart family. The line and area charts. With this directive, we create a line chart. With this chart, we create a line with an x and y axis. We use here the multi data format. Let's save this and see how it looks like. I have reused the same customization inputs from the previous charts. Let's try them out. Now I want to try the area chart. The chart is similar to the line chart, the only difference is it draws areas below the lines. I have also reused the same inputs. Let's see how it looks like. And this chart draws overlapping areas. You can highlight the other areas by selecting them on the legend. We can also create stacked area charts with this directive. Here the areas are stacked on top of each other instead of overlapping. Let's try one with the same settings as before. And now you see the areas are stacked on top of each other. And the last area chart is the normalized area chart. Let's see how it looks like. You see, it is a stacked area chart where the areas are normalized. The effect is that instead of seeing absolute values, you see percentage values. Here for the month January, you see that 16% of all sales were for books, 28% of the whole sales were graphic cards, and so on. Now let's move on to the next chart family, the pie charts. The first chart is a basic pie chart. It requires a simple data array and displays the data in form of a pie. We also reuse the same input options. We can also set if the pie should be displayed as a donut. And the next pie chart is a pie grid chart. Instead of displaying the data in one pie, it displays them in separated pies. Additionally, it shows the percentage values for each pie. Here you see that book sales are 29% of the whole sales. And graphic cards are 42% of all sales. And now the last chart of this family, the advanced pie chart. You see that it is a basic pie chart, where the values are shown on separated labels. You also get the total sum of all values and the percentage values for each product sales. We also have a chart type which requires a different data array. 
the bubble chart displays bubbles across the x and y axis. In this data array, which is similar to the multi-data array, you also need to specify the size of the bubble. This is the directive for the bubble chart. We can reuse most of the input options. Additionally, I have set the min and max values for the y-axis. Let's save this and see how it looks like. On the x-axis we have the months, on the y-axis we have the sales, and the size or the volume of the bubble may represent a different dimension. And another chart type is the gauge chart. It requires the simple data array. It displays the values in form of a gauge. There is also the linear gauge chart, which requires only one single value as an input. You see it displays only one gauge bar. It has a current value, a unit for the value, and a marker for the previous value. And now let's take a look at the heat map. And it requires a multi-data array. The heat map encodes values to a color. Here I have specified a variety of red colors. The higher the sales, the stronger the red color. And now we try the number card chart. It simply displays the values on a card. This is the directive for the number card chart. And you see I, I display the sales on, on separated cards. And this is the directive for the tree map chart. Each value is represented by an area. The higher the value, the bigger the area. It is a good way to visualize the size differences between the values. And at last, let's take a look at the polar chart. It displays the multi-data in form of a radar. The value axis is now a circle around the center. The higher the value, the higher the distance to the center. These axes here are the months. They span an area within the circle. The areas are overlapping, but you can highlight them by selecting them on the legend. And that's it with the introduction of NGX charts for Angular. With this framework, you can display charts for any occasion. So farewell and have a nice day!